What's going on guys? Welcome or welcome back to Dan Reacts. I'm Dan. This is my reaction channel. The time has finally come guys. We are here March 19th, which means Falcon and Winter Soldier has finally arrived on Disney+. Plus. I'm so freaking excited. We have been waiting this collectively as a fandom pretty much since WandaVision ended. I know all of us are just waiting for more Marvel. I cannot wait to get into the series. I love Bucky. I love Falcon. I love Marvel. After WandaVision, I was so amazed with that entire show that my expectations are pretty high right now. I feel like Marvel has really set the bar for what their quality of shows is going to be, or at least what they want them to be. So I'm expecting a lot out of this Falcon and Winter Soldier show. Like, I, I really, really am. You know, I remember going into WandaVision and I didn't really necessarily know too much about Wanda. Um... I didn't really know too much about Vision collectively. I didn't really, I wouldn't say I didn't care about them, but I didn't necessarily have a, you know, big interest in their storyline, you know? I, I walked into that show saying to myself, if they want me to be a fan of this, they need to make this character driven and they need to flush out these characters for me to really care about them. And they did exactly that. That's exactly how I feel about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Like, I feel like if they want it to be the caliber that WandaVision was, have the same emotional impact, get people to feel as invested in those characters, the story has to be drived around their character development. And it has to be character driven. You know, I want to really feel who Sam is as a character. You know, I want to really feel who Bucky is. We've gotten a decent amount of backstory on Bucky, but even that said, I still, at this point, don't care about him more than I care about Wanda and Vision. Like, I feel like Wanda and Vision at this point are some of the most developed and well-written characters so far in the MCU in the last, you know, couple years. Like, I just feel like they did such a phenomenal job with that. And so I'm really hoping they're able to add that to Bucky and uh, Sam because I really like them and I want them to have that same level of impact for me. I've obviously seen, you know, the, I saw the Super Bowl trailer, I saw the like main launch trailer, but for the most part, like WandaVision, I'm going into this super raw. I didn't want to be tainted in any way. I didn't want to have too many things that I was going to be expecting. I know that um, the actor who I forget his name, but he's the main villain in Civil War. I know he will be in this. I also know that Peggy Carter's uh, daughter or granddaughter is going to be in this. I forget her name. She's Emily Van Camp, the actress. So I'm really excited for this. You know, I I think Sebastian Stan is a phenomenal actor. I think that Anthony Mackie is a phenomenal actor. I think that the two of them should have no problem holding a show. The one thing I will say I do know is that it's only six episodes. So for me, like from a show standpoint, that does kind of freak me out a little. Six episodes, I get it's a limited series, but that's a limited, limited series. You know, uh, I, and especially if it goes down the same path Disney Plus shows typically go down, which is like a half an hour for an episode. I don't know if that's going to be enough time to really get me invested in a Bucky Falcon story, but we'll see, you know, I'm, I'm not like lost hope on it. I'm super excited for it. I'm super optimistic for it. So let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's get right into it. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode one. All right, we got a cold open. Is this a funeral already? Oh, Jesus. Oh man, hearing Cap's voice just kind of like took me back a little bit. One of our military liaisons. LAF. Yeah, yeah, they're high powered. We lost contact with Hassan's plane just after he took off. This has to be subtle. Subtle. Got it. Oh god. They've already hijacked the plane. Is it monkey to Okay, switch into plan B. Oh, 
All right, Sam. Oh. Got me for salt? Let's get you out of here. Whoa. Ah. That's crazy that he can open his wings like inside of something. Well, it's a good thing this guy's got wings. The CGI looks fantastic, though. He just yanked him out. This guy is crazy. Oh! Jesus. Falcon's got no issue killing people. The budget does not look spared, let me tell you. Jesus. Nice clean takedown. Thanks. You can try to reroute that to the other. Do you not? <laughs> Avengers! Aslema! Deadly Marty! Aishik Barsha. Call themselves flag smashers. Is that a new thing? Bad guys give themselves bad names? There's a lot worse names than that one. In the blip. Every time something gets better for one group, it's worse for another. How could you find it better? I do gotta ask you though, because like online, there's just been a lot of a lot of stuff about Steve. Actually, some people they think that he's in a secret base on the moon, Washington. What are you doing there? Moon stuff. <laughs> Courageous, righteous, hopeful. I don't know if there's ever been a greater symbol, but it's more about the man who propped it up. He's gone. Thank you, Captain America. What does the public think happened to him? I feel like that's gonna get stolen at some point. My sister and my nephews, man. When I left, they were babies. I come back and they're little men. It's crazy, you know? Yeah. When Steve first told me about the shield, the first words I said were, Feels like it belongs to someone else. Yeah, but you've earned it. And Steve thinks it belongs to you, so like, who are you to judge his call? Look at that uniform. Half hour before last call. I can't, guys. I have to prep for tomorrow's session. Really? You God, ah, my boy. He's terrifying. El Hydra. Is he bad? Oh, God. Thank God. Oh, God. James, I asked you a question. Are you still having nightmares? Yeah, I'm still having nightmares, lady. You seem a little off today. Did something happen recently? You're not gonna... <laughs> oh, come on, really? You're gonna do the notebook thing? Why? It's passive-aggressive. <laughs> it's passive-aggressive. I crossed the name off the list of my nemesis. Oh, number two. That's from number two. Nobody gets hurt. It's a big one. <laughs> I didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> and what about rule number three? 
I'm no longer the Winter Soldier. I have changed Bucky Barnes, and you're part of my efforts to make amends. I trust me. Already I can tell they're taking the character out. Like, they're very much making these characters so much more human. Look, you've got to nurture friendships. I am the only person you have called all week. That is so sad. <laughs> I had a little call. And if you were alone, that is the quietest, most personal now. Wow. Well. Rory, what's going on? I thought we were getting lunch. He's putting his trash into my trash. It's trash. And the time has come for me. Oh, oh. nobody made it past the night. So we are. It's like a shame. I have a shift, but if you want to come back here, I should be done around 10. Okay. The snoop school. I fucked this kid up, do Wait, was his son the college student? Ooh. Uncle Sam! Imagine your uncle being an Avenger. What's going on? You got mom sneaking up on your face. How are you going to try to read me when you know I'm the one that reads you? I thought we were going to discuss if we were selling. We did. You know the situation we're in. So I prefer not to dwell on it in front of everybody. Well, what if we don't have to sell it? Wow, that's beautiful. You made a deal before Daddy died. You're out there. I do things my way here. Right, but you tangled the house into this when you took those loans. We can take a loan and consolidate everything. It'll take down your monthly. To the rescue, huh? Always. Let's get some dinner. I'm hungry. Well, in fact, not the most adorably old-fashioned thing anyone's ever done. Aww. Try the whole online dating thing. It's... Crazy. A lot of weird pictures. I cannot imagine Bucky on, like, Tinder. Wait, how old are you? 106. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Reading your mind. Please don't. I think it's really sweet. You're spending time with Rory. It's been hard for him since his son died. You know how we call a guy whose wife died a widower? Or if your parents die, you're an orphan. No word for someone whose kids die. Oh, no offense to you, girl, but this is a very heavy date you're kind of pulling on him right now. It's a very deep combo. God, I owe you a lunch. Oh man, this poor guy. You could just see the guilt on his face. The appointment's an hour. There's no such thing as on time. You're either early or late. Pick one. That's not conspicuous. This is very unnerving. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Damn. Very organized. Jesus. At least he didn't die. I knew it, Falcon. Yeah. Yes, yes, man. Oh. Is there some kind of fun for heroes? Did Stark pay you when he was around? My condolences, by the way. Uh, My condolences, by the way. You have no income over the last five years. How can you have income if you don't exist? Sarah. So stupid. Under the old terms, sure. But these days, with them just showing up, well, things tighten up. With everyone just showing up? That's how he words it? I know your family has banged with us for generations, but we cannot approve you. Imagine turning an Avenger down for a loan after getting a free selfie. I knew they weren't gonna help us. It's not their job. Those people don't even know who Daddy was. He was a giant. I don't care. I'm not gonna quit. You don't know what happened these last five years. I was alone with two babies, and I survived. I'm the one who kept that boat from sinking. We're not selling our family's legacy. 
You gonna do me like that when you know I'm right? Yep. That is a complicated situation. I feel like all the Avengers should have like a life pension. So this is the leader of the Flag Smashers, huh? Yeah, real nice guy. That guy was like superhuman. But that's their MO. We just gotta keep our eyes and ears to the ground so they pop up and anything else happen outside the video. Wait, you don't think you'd be a... But I'll circle back to you. Let's keep this between me and you, okay? All right. While we love heroes who put their lives on the line to defend Earth, we also need a hero to defend this country. So, on behalf of the Department of Defense and our Commander-in-Chief, join me in welcoming your new Captain America. Who? That's it, dude? That was the quickest 50 minutes of my entire freaking life. Holy crap. All right, well, really, really, really good episode. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I'm really into the character arcs that you can tell they're setting up for Sam and uh, Bucky. You know, like, as I said in my intro, they really need to make it character driven for me to care about these people. And they did exactly that. Like, the moment it started, I'm getting really good backstory on Falcon. You know, you had the really great scenes with Bucky. Dude, my heart breaks for him because, as we all know, he was such a slave to Hydra and did not want to be what he was. And so the fact that now here he is. You know, we've never really gotten to see that side of Bucky. You know, we knew he came back to himself and we knew he was saved from that, you know, mindset. And we knew that he was kind of fixed in Wakanda, but we haven't actually seen him internally, mentally deal and cope with what he was going through. So to be able to see that was really, really great. To be able to see him like in a therapy session, that therapist was amazing. She was just like roasting him the whole time and was really straight up with him, which I think is exactly what he needs because it's clear that he's kind of trying to, you know, not address it. So really, really enjoyed those therapy scenes um, and all of his scenes, to be quite honest. I really liked the date scene. It was really, really sad kind of watching him. Was he about to admit to the dad and then he kind of got cold feet? I don't know. It's really sweet that he takes care of him and like, you know, looks out for him. I, I can't imagine what that kind of guilt would feel like, you know, just to know that you were responsible for a death that you didn't want to be responsible for. I can't imagine, you know. On to Sam, loving his backstory as well. I'm loving that we're getting to meet his family. You know, again, I just feel like in a lot of the Avenger movies, they're very one-dimensional characters, right? We've seen them as heroes. We've seen them save the day. But, like, for someone like Sam, he's very much been a side character throughout. So getting to actually, you know, find out he has a sister who has nephews and he had parents who had a boat and just all this backstory is just so great to get because it's really humanizing them and making them more relatable and not just like these, you know, unrelatable heroes that just kind of kick ass all the time. No, they're actual people that have struggles. The fact that Falcon is struggling to get a loan is wild to me. Like, I, I, I just can't even believe that that's A, something somebody would do, and B, he's not, like, covered for life financially as an Avenger. I, you know, and he really brought up a good question that I've kind of been thinking to myself for years. How do they make money? And it's true. It's like, how do they make money? How do they support themselves? You know, that's, that's a really interesting thought. The flag people, or whatever they called them, I kind of forget. I'll have to rewatch it, but that's that's really interesting. I'm really interested to see like what that's about. It's some type of uprising of sorts. That guy was completely superhuman. Is he like a byproduct of Hydra? Was he kind of like Bucky? I don't really know. I, you know, he was kicking guys up against the wall. He stomped that guy down on the ground. He's definitely got some power. And then that ending scene, dude, with the freaking guy coming out as Captain America. Like, holy shit, they just replaced him that quick. America is that codependent and that desperate to have somebody clean their messes for them. It, it, it honestly, it's not lost on me. It didn't surprise me at all. But I'm just like, I could never, I could never accept that man. I feel like if I was watching the news and they just brought out some guy in Captain America's outfit, I'd, I'd be like, hell no. I would not accept that. Absolutely not. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. All in all, though, great first episode. I really liked it. They did a good job kind of like hooking you in. They had that whole action sequence that was just 
so amazingly done. You know, the, you can just tell the budget was not spared for this show. You know, I think a lot of people were wondering, like, because they're not on the big screen and they're on Disney Plus, is it going to look less than? Is it going to have a lower quality? So far, I don't think so. I thought those action sequences looked awesome. The CGI was really well done. You couldn't even tell that half of it wasn't real. Um, and yeah, really good episode. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait till Friday. We're back in the Marvel world, guys. We're back doing Marvel reactions. I'm so stoked. If you guys liked my reactions today, please hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my upcoming Falcon and Winter Soldier reaction videos. I'm also going to be recording Addie Watches the Hobbit this weekend. So that's a really fun thing to be looking forward to. I know a lot of people have been enjoying her journey down Middle Earth and we're going to be chugging along. We all know that the Hobbit's not as good, but if you love the world of Middle Earth, I feel like you're still able to find love in the Hobbit series, at least a little bit. So I'm really excited for that. Other than that, though, guys, uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you in the next one.